This video is proudly sponsored by Newtype. Tools, accessories, model kits, these guys have it. Hop over to NewtypeHQ.com and use the link below to help this channel out for future builds. Hey, what's going on my dudes and dudettes and welcome back to part 3 of this fantastic build series from the good folks from Kotobukiya. So since this year marks the 4 year anniversary of the re-release of Zone of the Ender's second runner Marza for the PlayStation 4, why don't we get started building the 1100 scale Zone of the Ender's second runner Jehudi HD Edition from the popular video game franchise Zone of the Enders. And without further ado, let's get to it! Yo, welcome back my dudes and dudettes to another exciting build from the good folks from Kotobukiya. And if this is your very first time onto this YouTube channel, welcome. So roughly four and a half weeks ago, I had the absolute privilege building two unique orbital frames, one of which being Vic Viper and Anubis, both of which I have never built before and I always wanted to build it. But thanks to your guys continued support, I was finally able to fulfill that dream. But since I built these two, it only seemed natural to build the very last orbital frame from this particular universe. Now I know there's a handful of you dudes and dudes are already asking yourself, didn't you already build this model kit almost three years ago? Absolutely. In fact, this is going to be my actual third attempt of doing it just right. Even though I actually had a lot of fun doing it the first time, it only seems natural to revisit it one more time to bring all these model kits together. And thus, my dudes and dudes, we're going to be building the Zone of the Enders Jehudi HD Edition. Now, with this variant, it's slightly different from the one I built before because this guy is packed with tons of weapon accessories. On top of that, a unique different color scheme from its previous predecessor. On the first side of the box, we get a nice paragraph description on how this orbital frame was constructed and who the actual pilot is. A very brief shot of the water slide decals, which is great because the original model Get, did not have anything on it. More promotional work, more illustration work on both sides of the box art, and that pretty much is it. Now, let's take a look what's inside the box. And as always, you are happily greeted with the instruction manual, once again giving you that beautiful illustration of Jehudi. Going toe to toe with the enemy support type orbital frames, the mummy and the raptor. Would have been nice if they actually came with a model kit back in the day. On the other side of the instruction manual, you get a nice illustration of Jehudi from the promotional work, and the first page gives you an absolutely fantastic illustration of Jehudi from the ever so talented man, Yoji Shinkawa. And I'm pretty sure a handful of you dudes and dudes know the man. He's done tons of illustration for the Metal Gear franchise. On the second page gives you a nice shot of dynamic poses that you can put Jehudi in when he's fully constructed. And as for the runners themselves, they're very much the same like you expect from the very first version that came out. You get pre-posable hands that can be removed and detached. You got a retractable blade that can move up and down great range of articulation around the shoulder, but this particular aura frame is packed to the brim with its own transparent clear circle, which you can attach to the missiles that are actually added to Jehudi, as well as the little funnels that are around the side of his skirt, which is great. This is basically Jehudi's ultimate form towards the end of the game, and I like the fact that they incorporate this in this model kit. Once again, giving a brief diagram on how to manipulate the hip sections, the feet, and the retractable plate, as well as the backpack effect parts to the thrusters. The circular part is something that I'm not gonna use, but it's nice that I include it anyway for that added effect. Now when it comes to this model kit, it actually comes with water slide decals and this is an absolute treat to have since the model kit from the first one didn't have it. And the very lower hand corner you get a color guide to do some custom painting if you choose to do so. But this is where things get kind of confusing. Jehudi actually has two different color schemes for this particular design. In the original game he was actually a bright blue with orange highlights on the specific core areas. Which by all means that is totally fine because I was trying to go for the original aesthetic on how it looked on the game. But part two is going to have something a little bit more drastically different from its original predecessor. So enough about that, let's talk about the next important thing in this model kit, the runners. First runners up, you can get these beautifully colored mint chip green pieces that definitely have a great deal of surface detail. As I mentioned before in this video, the color difference between these two are drastically different. So this time around, I'm going to try to keep the color the same, but drastically improve it in a way it looks really stylish. As you can see here, the runners are exactly the same from the previous model kits. So there's nothing really different here. Next runners up, we're going to get these nice mustard brown runners that definitely have an emphasis on a little bit more on the orange spectrum, which is great, but I want to put a little bit more of an emphasis on a metallic surface on it. So I'm going with a nice metallic gold to really make those areas pop out while putting like a black primer to really seep into those little details to make it even more pop outish. As for the other runners, you're going to get a handful of pre posable hands that are opening and closing to make them look dynamic, but these particular pieces are really small, so I would really recommend using a fine tip brush to get into those little details. As for the other runners, you're going to get a handful of dark gray pieces, a little bit more of a Nocto black, which is great because it's going to heavily emphasize key areas around the head, shoulders, mid thighs, as well as the homing missiles for the weapon accessories. If you choose to actually add them to your model, 
Battle Kit, followed by more runners for the Backpack Unit, and then a small selection of white runners for the homing missiles, a small selection of clear runners, and probably the nicest feature of this model kit is these beautifully sculpted blue effect parts, which are absolutely great. These are going to be for the engine sections for Jehudi if you want to have them in flight mode. But one thing I absolutely love about this model kit compared to its other predecessors of Vic Viper and Anubis, this kit is packed to the bin with tons of clear runners, which gives you great options of putting tons of LEDs into this model kit that makes it look really great. This time around, I'm going to be heavily utilizing these particular shoulder plates to look just like in the video game because in my original one I did, the LED light system was great, but the lights were pretty weak, and I think that has something to do with the fact that the power supply was a lithium ion battery. This time around, I'm going to be using a USB type A power supply close to using three volts to light up everything evenly so that way it looks great. Followed by the additional attachments for the action base, which is pretty standard for this particular model kit. More great runners for the hip section. And to wrap things up, you're going to get the hazard circle like you would see in the video game. This thing is great, but it definitely is going to prove it's going to be a lot of issues with weight distribution problems. So luckily enough, Kotobuki actually acquired an actual adapter that connects to the action base so that way it can stay upright. More clear parts for the homing missiles, which is great. A pamphlet so you can use any parts, we don't need that. And to wrap things up, you're gonna get the water slide decal. Once again, this is an absolute great bonus to have for this particular model kit because this was not included in the original model kit. But if you look at it on hindsight, it actually makes sense because the original Jehudi model didn't have any like hazard or caution signs all over the orbital frame. So in part two, it only makes sense because it's like a slight upgrade from that one. So it's great. So instead of doing a straight build and adding custom LED lights, I want to first time want to do a very simplistic and very dynamic looking diorama for this particular build. I was originally going to do something really like extravagant, but due to time constraints, I just want to do something that really showcases this awesome orbital frame doing something really awesome looking and I'm really excited to get started on this particular build. So as always, before I get started work on this model kit, I need to evaluate what I am going to do for a color scheme for Jehudi. Now I mentioned before, I went with more of an electric blue because it was very consistent how Jehudi looked for its original conceptual design. This time around, it's more of a mid chip green with orange highlights. and. I like that aesthetic, but I definitely want to emphasize more of a metallic blue, green, and more of a nice refined, bright, and metallic gold. So as you can see here from the references that you have from Jehudi back in the video game, you have the one that's default green and one that's a gray. This is all due to the fact the environment that the orbital frame is in in the game, so it definitely makes things very confusing. So with this particular build, I am going to be trying something drastically different while at the same time keeping that nice look looking fresh at the same time new. I did some experiments with a nice metallic blue bluish green from the good folks from Mr. Hobby and it looks absolutely fantastic. So it definitely is going to incorporate with it very nicely for all the sections around the leg, shoulder, and the thrusters. Now this time around, speaking of the thrusters, I'm going to be incorporating more LEDs in specific key areas, especially around the knee sections while at the same time boosting up the LED count around the shoulder plates. Now I could look at my previous build what I did a couple years back to get an idea of what I need to do, but I find that the experience of putting LED lights in this particular design is actually more exciting to do it from a blank slate. So that's that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be hauling out the areas that I know I can funnel in the electrical wiring so that way it doesn't get damaged or brittle or breaking. And at the same time, really trying to get this a nice cleaner look compared to my previous build. Now, when I worked on the Jehudi the first time, it was pretty much stuck in two poses. I'm gonna keep it in a stuck pose again because I wanna incorporate this into a diorama. But the important thing is at the same time, it's making it look dynamic, at the same time, look nice and professionally clean. So this is something that I've always wanted to do. I did incorporate a lot back in the day, but now that I've gotten better at doing LED wiring and installation, I think I can pull this off the way how I'd see in the video game.
right, now that I got most of the metallic parts done, I now need to tackle the most challenging part of this model kit, and that is actually installing a mega LED light onto the palm of the right hand on Jehudi. Now, the kind of effect I really want to pull off here is that nice energy stream effect that Jehudi does in the video game. And the best way to incorporate that feature, I'm going to be using like a very small selection of fiber optic wiring. This is going to be my second attempt at working with fiber optics this time around to try to pull off this effect. Now, there are issues working with a lot of fiber optics versus working with a small amount. Working with big watts of fiber optic wiring is actually going to look really dynamic looking, but the downside with this is it's going to be weight distribution problems. Even though it looks really cool in the right kind of lighting conditions, I don't want this to be a problem where Jehudi has a limp arm and that's going to look very awkward. So I'm going to utilize those fiber optics the way how I see in the game, make it simplistic while at the same time keeping the weight balance just right.
So as you can see here, I got the first shoulder and the arm fully constructed, and this one's gonna be requiring close to like three LEDs for both sections of the front and back, as well as the main jewel on the side. But there was one little detail that I forgot to do while I was painting that model kit, and that is actually doing some hand custom painting. As you can see here in the structure manual, the actual palm and the top part of the hand needs to be sprayed with a nice metallic blue. So I'm gonna be masking this area out and then apply the metallic blue that I use for the whole entire body by using a gold airbrush tool to it and then do some fine brush tip painting around the fingertips. Now the fingertips is optional, but at the same time it is shown on the instruction manual. So I wanna stay consistent to the way how it is shown onto this particular model kit. All right, as you can see here, that added detail actually makes things look absolutely incredible. Now, it's time to do some fine tip painting around the fingernails. So, I'm gonna be using a fine tip brush to make this effect look really great by using Tamiya Flat White, and then really incorporate it very gently onto the surface.
as I was wrapping things up for the head unit, I noticed that I had a bit of a situation when it came to the thrusters. Now, the model kit does come with a handful of these funnels that are supposed to interconnect to these effect parts for the thrusters. They look great, but for me personally, I don't like the aesthetic at all. They're a bit too distracting. So I came with the idea of just interconnecting these pieces together, just like the shape how it's done on the effect parts, and then incorporated them onto the thrusters in a way where it can actually be glued in there permanently to create that nice effect. Now, if the LED light is positioned in the right kind of angle, it's gonna make this effect look really, really nice. So we have finally reached the part of this model kit that I'm absolutely excited to share with you guys and that is going to be the diorama that's going to incorporate three, which was the original plan of incorporating three orbital frames. But since things are happening in my real life where I have to take my current office and get it prepared for a family member, I need to try something drastically different by incorporating just one model kit. And just to give you some context, the kind of idea that I wanted to do with this model kit was to incorporate all three orbital frames battling one another in a really dynamic looking diorama, but there were some issues with it in the conceptual phase. For starters, to make this effect look really, really cool, I would actually need to buy four to three more of this particular kit. Now. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the plastic quality, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but buying just this set alone is $70, and when you're buying four, 
tends to add up. And I don't want to do something that would uh, not necessarily take up a lot of space, but it will actually hurt me financially to do future content for this channel. So I had to take the chance of doing something much smaller while incorporating something dynamic. As you can see here, when it's fully constructed, it looks good. The surface detail is great. It actually creates the look that, that would definitely look great if you're doing like a big diorama or a hanger for your Gundam or your choice of a model kit. I like it. It looks good but it's lacking that Almon aesthetic like you would see in the Zone of the Enders video game. You know, putting some LED lights in specific key areas can really pull off the look, but I needed something that's screen futuristic, something that I can incorporate these runners into something that actually looks a little bit more dynamic, while at the same time really showing this area being destroyed and damaged from a battle of one unique orbital frame, which is a very ambitious project, but at the same time, it can be very expensive. But I was very lucky enough to come across New Type HQ's website one day and notice that they had a brand new action base readily available for the general public. And I immediately bought this right off the bat because not only that it was affordable, but the design aesthetic is 100% accurate to what you would see in the Zone of the Enders video game. And that absolutely made me incredibly happy. Not only the plastic quality is top notch, but the surface detail is just absolutely phenomenal. On top of that, this particular action base comes with tons of accessories that I can actually incorporate my ideal vision of showing a orbital frame ripping and tearing through this unique complex. So when I do this particular build, I'm going to make sure that everything is not symmetrical and make sure everything is like damaged, torn, weathered, but not too weathered to the point where it looks weird because in the actual game, there's not a lot of like heavy weathered um, surfaces in this particular fortress. Everything's kind of like brand newish, so I'm gonna try to retain that look, but at the same time, still kind of give like a, a reference of there's something being destroyed and something that is damaged. As you can see here from my test samples, the particular color that I have here is gonna get the job done. And this other test sample shows the kind of effect damage I wanna really incorporate on this unique diorama. So this is gonna require a lot of cutting, a lot of scraping, a lot of chipping to really pull off the effect I really wanna do. To do this, I'm gonna be using a special Dremel to actually cut out these areas out the way I want to look but since it's actually we were dealing with a great deal of plastic being shot out in different shots and directions I would really recommend you use some safety glasses to protect yourself when doing something like this
So, I got most of the work done, and it's absolutely looking really great to what how I was envisioning it, but here comes the challenging part. This particular model kit, action base is not going to have like a flat surface everything's going to be shifted in a weird ink where things are interconnected things that aren't interconnected things are going to be lifting upright things are going to be in a slanted position you know i want to give a sense that like this thing has been drastically destroyed while still keeping the design consistent i'm also going to be incorporating fiber optic light around the mid edges around these triangular shapes to give that nice glow pulsing effect i know i didn't show it in this video but it was kind of like a last minute thing to come up with towards when i was building this model kit Alright my dudes and do this as this video is wrapping up I want to share with you guys my thoughts and impressions about this unique build so first and foremost this was my very first attempt at doing a diorama. I know there's some parts that are a little inconsistent. I know there's some parts that are missing, but this was kind of like a last minute thing. I have other obligations that I have to do in my life that took up a lot of my free time. So I wanted to make sure that this looked good to my initial design aesthetics while at the same time retaining that nice look and feel of something that is actually dynamic looking. So I felt that I accomplished that. So working with Jehudi was a blast. This is like my third time building this model kit because I built a resin kit. I built two Kotobukiya kits back in the day. One that wasn't painted, one that was fully painted with LEDs. And then this one, I believe this is like my, my fourth one. So it will be my last. I know this is like a reoccurring theme for my channel of revisiting kits I did back then and then making them look really cool looking. This will be the last. I, I don't really feel the need to do this anymore, but I love this franchise a lot and it only makes sense after building Vic Viper and Anubis, it felt nice to wrap this thing up in a nice little bow of doing a Jehudi model kit. So I love that. But probably the one thing I love about this build was working with fiber optics for the first time and man, they're fun, super, super fun. Now I say that they're fun now because I only had to work with a small amount for this particular build, but my goodness, they are a lot of fun and I tip my baseball cap to all those veterans that did practical effects back in the late 80s and early 90s, man. That is a very time consuming project and I can understand how stressful and time consuming those projects were. So absolutely a blast uh, to work with. But definitely the biggest challenge of this model kit was trying something new. And I haven't done this in a long time and that was creating explosion effects was I was gonna do something grand, something big, something massive, something small, something that didn't take up a lot of light, something that didn't take up a lot of room. And at the same time, gotta keep mindful of, of where I'm gonna be putting this action base for the time being. It's just watching tons and tons of YouTube videos, a lot of the explosion effects were inconsistent and some of them were just more were dependent upon the explosion look once the lights were off. I want to try to incorporate the look and the aesthetic of it just as you can see in a neutral look and then had the LED effect be an added bonus. So I hope I incorporated the way how I envision it because it was fun. I haven't done a process like this since middle school and it was really cool to come, to come back and do something like this again and I love it so much so I think I'm starting to really start to enjoy this different approach on my channel. You know, I had a lot of fun doing kit bashes. More are coming. But 
doing dioramas, man, they are fun. They are a little expensive to do. I, I will say this, but man, so much creativity and freedom and ideas just flowing out of your mind and, and onto your project and taking things out and putting things in and then trying to incorporate a story. Oh man, so much fun. And I wouldn't even be able to do this without your guys' continuing support. Thank you guys so damn much. Man, I want to do more dioramas, dude. Maybe nothing this big, maybe something smaller, but I got that itch, man. I got it. I love it. I want to do more of these for other future projects. So thank you guys so much for taking the time watching this three-part series. Thank you guys for the likes, comments, and subscribes. You know, please do me a favor. Share this video to Hideo Kojima. Show it on Twitter. Show it on Instagram. Show the love and respect for Zone of the Enders. I love it. I hope you guys love it too. And I will see you dudes and dudettes on the next build.